こういうトラックを作るには金を考えて作ることはありませんだから気持ちの中の値段なんで私は田島純一と申しますレコトラと言われているものは3台ぐらいなんですよそれを35年間かけて作り上げたっていう。でもデコトラっていうのは見た通りこういうデコレーショントラック英語で言えばデコレーショントラックっていうんかなと思うんだけどこういうデコトラが始まったのは50年ぐらい前から始まったんですけど自分の生き方とか自分のふるさたとか。自分の家族とかそういうものを乗せて走れるっていうものが魅力なんじゃないかなと思ってますこのデコトラの全国の歌丸会という会長をしてますやっぱり世界でないトラックを作るっていうのが俺たちの意気込みなんで名前は山田義和ですこの車は龍神丸っていう名前で家1軒分ぐらいかかってる弓がかなってから悔いのねえようなこれ全体的に気に入って自信作だから名前が菊池正也です総額的にはまあ1000万近いような金額は多分かかってると思います綺麗に電気をつけて走ってて心が癒されるやっぱりトラックってよくそういうことあの怖いっていうイメージとかそういう言われるんですけどこのデコトラを見ればこんな可愛い色とか可愛いトラックを見てそれは人間,人間の本心が出てるんでそういうことはないしデコトラを通して少しでも喜んでもらえるっていうそういう気持ちが思ってもらえればそれがありがたいんかなと思いますよ。ぜひ文化に残してもらいたいよね。You're in a U-Haul. You're about to start your first semester at Duke, and driving down the road you see this sign, and another sign. You pay no attention, and then this sign lights up, and then... Disaster strikes. You're about to get your 15 minutes of fame, all thanks to this man. Hi, I'm Jürgen Henn. And he's infamous in these parts. Right, Jürgen? One could say that, yes. <laughs> I am known as the 11 foot 8 guy around here. Jürgen and his wife started 11foot8.com, which is what, exactly? 11 foot 8 website records all the truck crashes that happen here at the 11 foot 8 bridge. It's really all it is. <laughs> Eight years ago, I set up a camera outside my office here and、uh, started recording the traffic that goes under the railroad trestle behind me. Within a few weeks, I recorded a truck crashing into the railroad bridge. Since installing the camera, Jurgen has uploaded video of 113 crashes at the bridge and amassed over 10 million views. Most bridges in the state have a 15 foot clearance. The 11 foot 8 bridge, however, was built 100 years ago, hence the lower height. And now, thanks to Jurgen, these crashes have a dedicated follow up. Our fans are really intensely interested in these crashes and they love to buy souvenirs, a little piece of crash art.、Uh, what's crash art? The crash art are bent, mangled pieces of aluminum that usually form the frame of the truck. And the impact crushes that aluminum and, and kind of twists it in interesting shapes. People will buy the crash art, they love it. For some of them, it's almost like owning a piece of the Berlin Wall. Why doesn't the town just raise the trestle or lower the road? From the perspective of the city and the state DOT, the low clearance is clearly marked and it's up to the driver to decide their next move. Structural changes at this intersection would be extremely costly. Well, at least we have these awesome videos, right? 
I get no satisfaction out of seeing a new crash. If we found an actual solution to prevent this tomorrow, I'd be all over it. I'd love it. To anyone who says I'm too young or girls can't do it, I would say come watch a Monster Jam event. Watch me compete and watch me win. I'm Rosalie Raymer, the world's youngest professional female monster truck driver. When I first sat in the seat of a monster truck, I was 11. I started competing at age 14 and I've been competing ever since. I could drive a monster truck before I could drive a car on the road. I'm studying mechanical engineering at Georgia Tech and I'm working on making the monster truck of my dreams. I'm working on lowering the center of gravity of the monster truck so that it has better handling and more capabilities when we're out there on the field competing. First I get an idea about how I want to improve a monster truck. Then I put some of my ideas down on paper in my sketch pad. I get to put that into the computer so I can work with it on a higher level and I get to 3D print it. Having a technical mind is definitely an advantage on the field. I know exactly how my truck works and it allows me to read how it's doing on the track. I can fix anything that's wrong with my truck. Wildflower is the first truck I got to help build. Putting that pink, those big flowers on my truck, that really shows who I am and I'm proud of that. And I hope that that makes little girls who do love princesses and who do love flowers more open-minded to the world of big trucks and machinery and mechanical engineering. I'm proud of who I am. I am a woman. I drive big trucks. I've gotten several nicknames. One of the biggest ones that stick out in my mind was One Run Anderson. I would run one time, but I'm gonna tell you right now, you better have your cameras ready because it was gonna be one big bad run. I'm Dennis Anderson and I'm the original grave digger. If you don't know what a monster truck is, it's because you're a concrete cruising city slicker. The definition of a monster truck is, it has to have a 66, 43 Terra tire, meaning 66 inches tall, 43 inches wide, and normally they're around 10 to 12 foot tall and 12 foot wide, and they usually weigh about 10 to 12,000 pounds. That's what a monster truck is. My goal in life as a kid growing up is I wanted to be this big farmer. It never really was a goal in life for me to be a pro monster jam truck driver. Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger! The whole legacy of Grave Digger, this right here was the first stepping stone. My goal in life as I was building this truck was to have a big nice shop with a concrete floor because I built this thing in a tin chicken house I call it my empire, and it's the Grave Digger Empire here. Now we're up to nine Grave Diggers. We've built 32 Grave Digger trucks in the last 34 years. This is the dyno room, my most favorite place on the property. 1,500 horsepower, and we're going to see a test pull right now. Yeah, baby! Trust me, I have paid my dues all the way down the line. I have fractured my back, I've broke my shoulder, I've broke my ribs, I've broke my nose a couple of times, I've broke my arms. When you talk about living a dream, that's this old guy right here. I never have grown up, I still love toys, and that's why Grave Digger is what it is today. I think I've came up with the largest collection of old American cars in the world. Yeah, all of them has a story. But they kind of take their place in the forest, you know, and they're part of the forest. They grew up partially in the forest. And my name is Walter Dean Lewis. I run and operate and own Oak Car City, USA. I was born and raised in a junkyard 
and I like junkyards. This land was clear when I started putting them in there. I wanted nature to take its course and we just let it go wild. These cars come from other junkyards and just individual people and they all wind up here at Oak Car City. Ford, Chevrolet, General Motors, they land out there in the forest, rotting away. We build things out of rust out there, and it is a piece of art. <laughs>